On the night of January 23, 1974, scientists at the British Geological Survey reported that a magnitude 3.5 Richter scale earthquake was felt and recorded at 8.38 pm over a wide area of northern Wales in the United Kingdom with its shock waves felt as far as the English city of Liverpool and the town of Formby that they some 13 miles or so further northwards. Many of the North Wales residents which included families with young children reported lights in the sky followed by what they called detonations and shock waves felt in their homes which knocked pictures off their walls smashing crockery and glass in particular the North Welsh village of Bearwind's residents and witnesses reported glowing flying objects that apparently violently smashed into the Welsh Bearwind mountains causing a catastrophic landslide. One Bearwind witness and district nurse drove her vehicle to the crash site and reported a large UFO sitting on the mountainside with other smaller glowing objects on its underside as will a group of witnesses men returning home from the town of Bala, not far from Berwyn, swore in an affidavit that they had seen lying next to the road an UFO, which they said the military had recovered and transported away on a flatbed truck, and subsequent search and rescue operation by the Royal Air Force scoured the area and reported they had not recovered any crash aircraft debris or other, and the official investigation quickly arrived at the conclusion a meteorite aerial burst was probably the cause, however, much of the official explanation doesn't take account of the fact, witnesses spoke of UFOs, which were reported over a wide area, and by many witnesses, nor does it mention, the role of the UK government's Port and Downs Biological and Chemical Weapons Laboratory, and UFO investigators' findings, that on secretive NATO, alien UFO crash recovery team, had rushed to the scene, and had not only recovered, according to inside sources crashed alien discs, but also apparently dead alien bodies, with others, said to be still alive. Researcher Andy Roberts, said of the Bearwin UFO crash incident, in his book UFO Down, the claim was that a UFO piloted by extraterrestrials crashed, or was shot down, on the mountain known as Kara Bearwin and that the alien crew, some still alive, were whisked off to a secret military installation in the south of England for study. That secret military installation was none other than Porton Down, where Britain's deadly chemical and biological weapons program is carried out. Undoubtedly, Porton Down is one of the most sensitive of all UK government defence establishment installations, situated in the county of Wiltshire, England. Porton Down and its highly classified and secretive work is said to focus on producing deadly agents for use in wartime scenarios. This includes viruses, chemical agents and biological cultures. Porton Down it is said, can produce everything that carries the potential to threaten the population at large and kill millions with deadly nerve gases, chemical agents and horrific diseases. Work at Porton Down began at the height of the First World War in the 1940s. The installation became the center of the UK's interest in chemical and biological warfare programs. In 1946, one year after the war and defeat of the Hitler Nazi regime, Portum Downs' work, it was said, began to focus more on the defensive aspects, rather than offensive views of chemical and biological agents for use in warfare, though this is disputed by some, and in 1957, the installation was passively renamed, the Microbiological Research Establishment. By the late 1970s, with looming international moratorium, being sought for an outright ban, of chemical and biological weapons technology, the MRE was placed under the control of a civil body. As a result, on April 1, 1979, the MRE became the Center for Applied Microbiology and Research, though this done nothing for Port and Down's evil reputation in being publicly accused of mass poisoning scares and even the unlawful killing of British citizens. With the deadly nerve agent Sarin, in 1995, 
Horton Down was absorbed into the Defense Evaluation and Research Agency. Six years later, there was yet another change with Vera, which split into two organizations, a private body called Kintik, and the Defense Science and Technology Laboratory. However, the body is still steeped in official secrecy as a result of the fact that it is still an arm of the UK's Ministry of Defense. Today, the facility is known simply as DSTL, Horton. To British citizens, dead alien bodies on ice in Portland Down sounds like a mad Roswell conspiracy theory gone wild, but it is not and it has stubbornly been maintained throughout the Bearwin Mountain UFO crash story since the episode came to light in 1974. The source of the Bearwin Mountain port and down claims cannot be doubted as credible, as it came from an highly reliable respected person, Mr. Tony Dodd, an English police sergeant with 25 years service. Tony Dodd was also a UFO investigator, and one cannot claim. He didn't know how to carry out that professionally either, as he refused to reveal to anyone the real name of the source for an story that cited UFOs, NATO, and Horton Down as all involved in and cover up and silencing of the witnesses to the Bellwin UFO crash incident. The police sergeant Tony Dodd indicated the source was a serving soldier of the UK's special forces who was covertly seconded to NATO activities and he gave him the pseudonym of James Prescott. During the time of the Bearwin UFO incident, Prescott was stationed in the south of England, but refused to identify to the police sergeant, the unit or barracks as its duties were classified and it remained operational, however, Prescott said that on January the 18th, 1974, he and his colleagues were placed on emergency standby alert status. He said also this was common practice and he had served in other theaters and nations involved in crash recovery operations. Some 24 hours later, his unit was directed to make its way towards the English city of Birmingham. From there, the crash recovery team received further orders to immediately proceed towards North Wales. Prescott said it was halted on the outskirts of the city of Chester to take part in a military exercise they were told was to take place there. However, soon after this delay, orders changed yet again, and the team was again directed to make its way to Clangothlan near the town of Bala, North East Wales, at Clangothlan. Prescott said the unit noted a lot of ground and air-based activity in the area, with military aircraft seen above them in the darkened, mountainous Welsh skies. Prescott's team didn't remain there for long, and soon, it was on the move once more, having been directed to transit towards the village of Clanderfell, some miles northeast of the town of Bala. Upon reaching the tiny Welsh hamlet, they were ordered to upload two large oblong boxes, and placed them into their vehicle, with a warning to not even attempt to open the boxes, but to proceed directly to Port and Down Defence Establishment in Wiltshire to promptly deliver the boxes. Some hours later, the team reached the top secret government defence research establishment facility, Port and Down, and being directed to a specific part of the installation, the boxes were opened by the facility's staff. While the soldiers were present, they apparently contained, placed in decontamination suits, nothing less than two strange-looking and unearthly creatures. The portent staff cautiously then began the task of opening the suits. Prescott said that when complete, it was clear to all present that these entities were certainly not of this earth. He went on to say what I saw in the boxes that day made me change my whole concept of life. The bodies were about 5 to 6 feet tall, humanoid in shape, but so thin they looked almost skeletal with the covering of skin. Although I did not see a craft at the scene of the recovery, I was informed that a large craft had crashed and was recovered by other military units. Prescott also told the police sergeant Tony Dodd that he spoke with other soldiers from his unit, who told him they had also transported cargo to Porton Down, but with one difference, their cargo was still alive. 
we should also never forget the role in covering up for authorities and silencing the witnesses, the British Geological Survey and scientists and academics of the Geology Department of the University of Edinburgh that travelled down to Berwyn, Wales following the incident and who went door to door in the Berwyn area to tell residents and their children that what they thought they seen heard and felt on crashed UFO wasn't what they thought what they seen heard and felt, it was in fact a meteorite.